Welcome to the Unpopular Podcast. It's your boy Adrian Blackwell. And today's segment, USC, UCLA, they jumping ship, baby. Let's go. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and dive right up into it, man. This is something big and major. Uh, if you're a big college fanatic, you will understand how big this is. With USC, UCLA saying Pac-12 deuces, y'all need to handle your own stuff. And Big Ten saying, come on into this marimony and let's have some fun. This right here is going to change up the landscape. We, we know we've heard all about the, you know, the big conference, uh, the big the big conferences. You're going to have Big Ten, SEC is pretty much going to dominate. They're going to just make this where it's going to be like the NFL, the AFC, NFC. We're going to have two dominant conferences. And that's what's what's going to be. So let's just really look at this landscape and see how it's really going to change out. USC, UCLA, no more different than what Texas, Oklahoma did to the Big 12. The real big difference is, is it's the ratings. And it's really about money. Uh, Everybody's talking about how much money it is. And it's really about who's making the much money. Is it really really these divisions, these conferences, Big 10, Pac-12, Big 12, SEC, ACC. The real ones making this money is Fox, ESPN, and whoever else they're partnering with. That's the ones who's making this money. That's who's the ones bringing in them dollars. That's the one that's sitting here setting all this up. And that's what's really going down. But if you're a college fanatic and you're looking at tradition, well, say bye-bye to those traditions. It ain't going to last forever. Uh, it's time to, you know, grow, move on, and let's get it going. The big question here is really last two is... Notre Dame, that's one big one for me. Clemson, Florida State, that whole ACC, what are they going to do? In my mind, and the way I'm seeing these things, it's going to start to structure out. You're going to really have three big monsters. And it's really going to be Big Ten, SEC, and the Pac-12, Big 12, and ACC. They're going to have to figure something out. Either y'all going to have uh, a marriage at hand and come together with that old fake realignment that y'all had in the past. Or y'all gonna really do it and just go right on the head where you're gonna have a conference saying, look, you're on your own, you ain't got nothing to do. Either you come with us or we're gonna take what you don't have and then we're gonna gobble up and leave you left to dry. And that's what's really gonna happen. It's no more different than the Big East and what happened with them when Miami hightailed it and all those other conference, all those other teams from the Big 12 hightailed one left. Um, but, you know, this, this right here is really going to change up a lot of dynamics, man, when it comes to just the sport in general for college football, man. You're going to really have some real good games going on. Let's just really look at it, man. You're going to have Ohio State and USC. Just imagine those two right there playing against each other. Lincoln Riley, Ryan Day, both big offensive brains, you know, just, you know, nasty when it comes to calling – uh, offensive plays, scheming it, you know, putting the right players in the right place. I mean, just look what Ohio State did last year. Yeah, they lost two games, but they were still a top 10 or top five. They were right damn near top three offensive wise. Um, a lot of people comparing Ohio State to what the 2019 LSU uh, team did, and they thinking that that's what we might get this year from Ohio State. I don't really think we're going to get that. That right there. That was once in a lifetime, and for anybody who wasn't who wasn't around to see that, you know, you're going to have to just read up in magazines, watch it on the 30 for 30, and all the big, you know, uh, you know, memory lane shows that come out. But you know, that's just Ohio State, and then you know, USC. You know, let's look at UCLA versus Michigan. I mean, imagine that. Look what USC. Look what UCLA did to LSU when they came in town. Granted. That LSU team, it, it wasn't the same as with Joe Burrow in the 2019. Yeah, it wasn't even the same in 2018, 17, 16. I don't think that would have turned out the same way if, uh, you know, LSU would have still had that same team. But that was in the past. But just imagine uh, you at UCLA versus a Michigan. You know what I'm saying? Or, uh, you know, USC versus a Penn State. Imagine USC got to go travel all the way from California to all the way to Nittany Land and play it in the all-famous Whiteout. <laughs> at night in Pennsylvania. Man, that right there would be just an epic game itself. But just imagine that, you know, type of game. You know, and 
good to see how that turned out. That'll be something big. That'll be something monstrous. That'll be something that everybody would love to see. And that's what's going on, folks. I got to understand that this is all about ratings. This is all about the television show. This is all about the West Coast trying to get their recognition out there. USC, UCLA, they're good teams. The problem is, who's staying up 10, 9 o'clock, 10, 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night to watch a four-quarter game that just got started at the first quarter in 15 minutes? Not too many people on the East Coast are staying up, and not too many people in the in the Central Time are staying up. Anybody in Texas or North or, or Oklahoma or Kansas, they're not staying up past that time to watch those kind of games either. It's just it's the bad timing. But when you can bring those teams from the West Coast, bring them on Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, they have Rutgers, which they'll probably smash on them like it is nothing. But <laughs> you bring them out there and let them get that television show, or just imagine. If you Ohio State, and you got to travel all the way to USC land, a Trojan land, and you got to play them boys on their time zone. They're three hour behind time zone, or four hours, or whoever, whatever, wherever you at on the on this on this map. That is a big one, you know. But the real question really lies down to what else is going to happen. And there's a lot of talks out there about Notre Dame trying to. You know, that Big Ten is really trying to get in contact with Notre Dame. Like, look, this is what we got on the table. But Notre Dame has always been one of those teams that's kind of confusing. You know, you can have all your other teams playing in the ACC, all your other sports teams playing in the ACC, but not your football. Which, you know, if you're a hustler, you're going to hustle the way you're supposed to hustle. You're going to hustle right. You know, you know, your basketball, your baseball, your swimming teams, you're not going to bring in the same revenue as your football team. So you won't put all your eggs in one basket. You're going to just hold that one golden egg and put the rest out there. But, you know, imagine Notre Dame jump on board with Big Ten. Who else would Big Ten go to grab? Well, let's go back out to the West Coast. Let's get Washington. We can do Oregon. We can do Utah. It really depends, man. You can do Arizona State. It just really depends on how this school's going. It would be a much gamble bet on Oregon. I mean, here you would love to bet on Stanford, but Stanford hasn't been the same Stanford since Andrew Luck. You see what I'm saying? So the game is really starting to change, man. The sport that we know, the sport that we love is changing. It's still going to be a sport that we love. It's just going to be different. It's no more different than when the Big East just poof, out of middle of nowhere. That change has shocked a lot of people. It happened. You know, no more different than Texas A&M and Missouri leaving the Big 12 to go to the, to the SEC. It was a big change. A lot of people didn't like it. It happened. And, you know, and, and, and the result of it, Texas A&M and Texas didn't have that tradition lost. But uh, that tradition's coming back. Things will always change. It might not sit well for others, but things will always change. It will always go. And people will just learn to adapt. You're going to have to learn to adapt. Either if you like it or not, you're going to have to learn to adapt. But, you know, we can dive even more into this, you know, Imagine what the SEC is really doing. You haven't heard a lot from the SEC right now, which is that right there should be alarming, not in a bad way for the SEC, but it should be a bad way for other conferences. Because that just kind of lets you know that Greg Sankey and the presidents of those schools out there in that league are sitting back just watching like, I like this play. I like this play. It's kind of like chess. You know, everybody's moving their little pawns around, but the queen and the king and other pieces eventually move around. But this is really a game of chess. This is really the television shows really trying to find the best way they could, who could bring in the best revenue, to bring in the, the greater amount of revenue, really, in the, these leagues, these big leagues, the SEC. It's really sitting back like, hmm, that was a good move, USC to UCLA. All right. Let's do some more digging around. Because, you know, right now it's 2025 until Texas and Oklahoma comes to the SEC. But, you know, you get, you get the right lawyers involved, things can start changing around. You get the Big 12 and the Pac-12 start talking to each other. You know, negotiations start getting thrown on this table. Things can always change around. So, you know, I don't know if, you know, people are like, man, what's the SEC going to do? Ah, the SEC is going to be fine. You know, it's one of those leagues in the conference like they're sitting back just like Big Ten. Everybody was like, oh, Texas and Texas and Oklahoma's going to the SEC. The SEC is trying to dominate and just, it's always going to be SEC team in the national in the in the, in the championship. Well, Big Ten sit back and was like, okay, you know, hey, y'all, let's do an alliance. Let's all sit around and shake hands and agree that we will play these games. 
we're not gonna put nothing on, on paper. We're just gonna agree that we will schedule accordingly by this time, by 2024. This is what we're gonna roll with. And then <laughs> Got he <laughs> Got he <laughs> Big Ten say, oh, USC, U UCLA, y'all don't like it, I think, of course y'all, more than welcome to come. You know, that's always been the works. It's just like SEC's been the works of Texas and Texas and Oklahoma, you best believe in the works of something else. And the one school I think is gonna happen is gonna jump on board as well, Clemson. I mean, just imagine Clemson, I can see Miami. Miami's cooking up in the recruiting world. So you definitely know that it's just eyes. And Miami is one of those National brands has been around. You got to remember, Miami was never what we see as Miami is back then. You see what I'm saying? Miami was a dominant force. Before they jumped to the ACC, they were nasty in the league in the Big East. They were winning titles. The national championship titles, they were dangerous. There was a team that to play with until they went to the ACC. They haven't done nothing since. Haven't even won the, the league, you know, championship, haven't won a conference championship, haven't done nothing. So, you know, Miami is one of those teams you got to watch out for. Because like I said, right now, they, they're picking up momentum. Same thing with Texas. Texas back? Let's hold off on that. They've been back, you know, maybe three, four times already. But let's just hold off on them. But, you know, again, everybody, sit back and enjoy this roller coaster. This thing's about to get wild. I'm really excited. I'm happy. I think it's funny. It's comical how it all went down because it went from an alliance to two teams jumping ship and saying, y'all can have this little sinking ship. Titanic's unsunk, we're going somewhere where we're going to be sustained. Uh, and then, you know, you know, think about it, man. You're, 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 the, you're the two brands of your of your league, of the Pac-12. Who, who's really bringing in the much? Who's bringing in the web? That's really look about it. You know, same thing with the Big 12. Who was bringing in the most revenue for that league? Well, I mean, yeah, granted, Texas wasn't doing anything. You know, for the court, you know, since Mac, since Mac Brown, but they got a big fan base. Fan base been around for a long time. You know, those boosters out there, you know, they're gonna always bring in revenue. Texas is always gonna bring in revenue. Same thing with Oklahoma. You know, Oklahoma was a dominant force a long time ago. Yeah, you got to remember, Oklahoma was a dominant force. You just don't, you might fall off, but you, you don't lose it. So eventually, Oklahoma will be back. You know what I'm saying? It's just one of those teams that always will bounce back to Texas the same way, USC the same way, a lot of teams Miami the same way. Hell, look at Alabama. After uh, Bear Bryant passed away, yeah, Alabama, you know, fell off. Man. Look, look where they at now, Nick Saban. Look, see what I'm saying? So time all repeats itself. You just got to, you know, enjoy the ride. But y'all better enjoy this roller coaster because this thing is getting nasty. It's going to get crazy. This thing is going to be fun. Man, I'm just excited about this, man. I'm, you know, I'm, re I'm just ready to see the games. Schedule them, put them out there. Let's get this thing rolling. Why for these little, you know, sorry little neutral games, neutral games where, you know, you, you know, one team comes down to a stadium where it's not the home. Let's get some, let's get some home and home series going on. Let's get this thing rolling. I'm glad to see it. But it's your boy, Adrian Blackwell. This is the Unpopular Attention Podcast. Y'all done got done watching me. Put y'all on some game about the new conference realignment. Like, subscribe, turn on the notification bells, leave a comment on what else you would like for us to cover, and I'm out. Peace.